and welcome to the Art Life YouTube channel. I'm Mrs B and I'm here today to show you all about how to do some rock art. Thank you so much to all the new subscribers who have checked out the Art Life Art Lessons and had a go at home and also tagged me on the Facebook page. Today I'm going to show you three different ways to create some awesome rock art. We turn a really plain kind of subject like this and give it some happiness and often a really nice message. You could also turn them into some really cool and funky food groups and some animals. I'll show you how right now. I'll also show you how to protect the rock so that you can keep them outside to brighten up your garden. What we'll need for our rock decorating activity today is some acrylic paints, lots of different colours. You'll need brushes to paint with, some garden rocks, all different shapes and sizes, as well as a gloss medium. I'll show you a bit later the one that I use, but most gloss mediums should be okay just to protect the paint afterwards. So the first thing you need to do for our gorgeous rock art today is firstly gather up your paints. Now what you might notice is I've gone with pretty much every colour of the rainbow here. So the brighter the colours you have, the better. I've also gotten some white because I'm going to mix some lighter tones. And I've added in a little coppery metallic one here because that adds a bit of shimmer and brightness to our work. So I'm going to show you a few different ways to paint your rocks. Firstly, we're going to start with some inspirational rocks and I'm going to make a bit of a rock garden for the neighbours that live on my street. Now, whenever you're painting anything, it's really tempting to just go straight in and paint the detail. So, for example, I might want to paint a word that says joy on here. But if I do that, then the rest of my rock is still boring and, and gray. So I wanna fill the entire background full of pattern, full of color first before any details. So let's consider what you want behind your rock. And rock art is all about having fun. So I'm just gonna grab a nice, bright, beautiful color here and start to paint. Now, the better the quality paints you have, the brighter the colour is going to become. If you did get some sort of cheaper, waterier paint, you may need to do a couple of layers because you want the colour to be nice and bold and bright. So today I'm going to give you three ideas for rock art and you can have a go at creating one, two or all three of them. The first one is some fun, inspirational quotes. The next one, we're going to have a go at turning rocks into certain foods. And the second one, we're going to have a bit of a play at turning them into people and animals. For the first one, the inspirational quotes, you really just need to play with pattern. So I'm just going to gather up lots of different rocks and have a play with pattern. Pattern is just anything like stripes, spots. You can see I'm doing some circles there. So consider some lines and shapes that you can really play with. How cool is that color? So can you notice the difference with this bluey indigo color that I'm using compared to the yellow that I used? I know yellow is generally a lighter color, but you can really see the quality difference there. I won't need to do a second layer with this blue. important thing to note is that whenever you're doing another layer you need to make sure that the background layer is completely dry otherwise you're not going to get that sharp crisp kind of edge like what I've got there the colors are going to mix and possibly that might not be the outcome you're after so make sure each layer should dry completely before going in with your second layer it doesn't take too long Now 
as I said, I'm also going to show you some fruit today as a second way to create rock art. You might already have an idea as to what this one could be. <laughs> I really love the smoothness of the texture of painting rocks. It really is quite satisfying and therapeutic, so I hope you enjoy it too. This guy is going to be an animal. You can see some rocks are actually a little bit rougher than others. Some are super smooth, some have little spots that you sort of just have to paint over and over or dab in some of the paint so that you can get into those little creases so that the entire rock is completely covered with paint. Okay, so I'm gonna show you an example of a pattern now. This blue background is completely dry. So I'm gonna go in with a different color, a nice bright contrasting color, and just add in some spots here. Now, the more detailed the pattern, the more interesting your rock art becomes. So I'm going to work hard to get these spots really neat. I'm going to be really intentional, careful. I'll make some different sizes. Okay, he's looking cool. I'll call him chicken pox. Now this one might need another layer, so that's a good time to do that now. You can see the second layer really makes that orange a lot brighter. Just added some white to my sort of magenta color there. So to be honest, with these patterned ones, I really don't have an idea what I'm doing beforehand. I'm just mixing it up a little bit, playing with shapes, playing with colors, playing with lines and patterns and seeing where it takes me. You might choose to have more of a plan, but for me, I'm really just going with it and enjoying the process. might be able to tell now is that I've started with the base layer and I'm building up each of the rock designs with details over the top now. Let the background dry and then add details like lines and shapes and things like that to make each rock even more interesting. I've done a background layer, then I've done some patterns over the top, now I'm just adding some shading and some tone with the white there. After it's completely dry, which I'll let most of these just completely dry now. I'm gonna go in with a black Sharpie to add some of the really fine details. It's really tricky to paint really fine details, so that's why using a texture or some sort of permanent marker is gonna help you. So get all your details down with paint, then give them a good few hours to dry before going in to add your extra details with a Sharpie.
Please don't forget to follow at Art Life Art Lessons on Facebook and please post any photos of any artworks that you've, that you've done from our videos. I'd just absolutely love to see what you've come up with, especially if you've adapted some of my ideas and made them your own. So please make sure that you tag me in any photos of your creations. So now that our rocks have been painted and they are completely dry, we can now go in with a Sharpie or some sort of dark permanent marker to add details just to make them even more obvious what they are. You can see it's a lot easier to draw on the rock rather than paint, especially with the smaller details like this. But you do need to be a lot more careful because we can't really fix the Sharpie. We literally have to go back in and paint over the top again. So we don't really wanna do that. Um, so please be very careful when adding your Sharpie details. I'm gonna start with my food group here. <laughs> That's cute. You can see I've sort of stuffed up a little bit there. So my mantra when I'm teaching is if you've done a mistake, try to turn it into a masterpiece. So that means that we're just going to try and work creatively to try to turn this little mix up here into a line that kind of looks like I was meant to do it in the first place. So I'm going to try and do that now. I doubt when I speak to the kids in my class. There's some food examples. You could play with those and make a little shop and have a good fun time. And now I'm going to turn my three little rocks here into animals. Now I must say that these guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the patterned kind of playful ones, they're my favorite. Because what I'm gonna do now is put some inspiring kind of words, maybe um, some really nice attributes like hope and joy and peace and things like that. And I'm gonna put them in a bowl that says, take what you like. And so if someone feels like they might be in need of a lit little extra love, They might choose to take this rock today. So now that all of my rocks are completely dry and have been sitting out for a little while, it's time to protect them. Now, anything that you leave out in the elements, in the wind, in the rain, in the sun is going to obviously weather your work. So I often will varnish um, anything that's going outside and I use this awesome super gloss by Zart. It's got a really glossy uh, finish to it and it looks nice and shiny and it just protects your wonderful artwork. So I'm just gonna coat each of these in a nice thick layer of gloss. This is sticky stuff. 
as you can see. There. I'll just let them dry now for probably a day and they can go out in the garden for everyone to enjoy. So it's as simple as that. I really hope you've had some fun with colour, fun with some writing and had a go at creating some awesome rock art that you can bring light to your neighbourhood or your garden or just a bit of fun. Please make sure that you subscribe below, like and comment and also follow us on the at Art Life Art Lessons Facebook page. Thanks for joining me. Bye.